two methods exist for creating a DNA fingerprint or DNA profile. We have discussed the older method, which involves VNTRs, which stands for variable numbers of tandem repeats. Remember, VNTRs are repeating sequences of the DNA nitrogen bases A, C, G, and T that range from 9 to 80 nucleotides in length. DNA fragments of different lengths of VNTRs can be analyzed using gel electrophoresis. The newer technique makes use of shorter repeating sequences of DNA known as STRs, or short tandem repeats. These smaller sequences are only two to five base pairs in length. The advantage STR analysis has over VNTR analysis is that only a small sample of DNA is necessary. Plus the process works better on the degraded DNA samples that are often found at crime scenes. Scientists have isolated the positions of sequences of short tandem repeats on the chromosomes of humans. These positions are called loci. Comparing multiple loci from a sample and a suspect can help individualize the DNA fingerprint. Okay, time for a little biology. Humans have a total of 46 chromosomes, but these chromosomes come in pairs. So each of our body cells contains 23 different chromosomes. During fertilization, we receive one chromosome from our mom and the other chromosome from our dad. These chromosomes can have different amounts of STRs at each locus. Let's look at this diagram for a visual of what I'm talking about. Here are 22 chromosomes and two sex chromosomes, the X and the Y. Let's focus on chromosome seven. In your body cells right now, you have two chromosome sevens. One you inherited from mom, the other you inherited from dad. There is an STR locus on this chromosome called D7S820. This STR involves the base sequence GATA repeated anywhere from six to 15 times. Now maybe the chromosome you got from mom has this sequence repeated 12 times, but the chromosome you got from dad has this sequence repeated eight times. This would mean you are heterozygous for that STR. You have two different versions of that STR. Yay, biology. As you will see, this will be evident on the DNA profile as two peaks. It is also possible that both chromosome sevens have the same number of GATA STRs. Maybe mom and dad both had the sequence repeating 10 times. That would mean you are homozygous for that STR. You have the same version of that STR on both chromosomes. This will be visible on the DNA profile as one peak. This image shows the 13 different STR loci that were used by the FBI up until 2017. Now the FBI uses 20 different STR loci to create a DNA profile. The more STRs that are used, the more individualized the evidence becomes. When matching three different STR loci from a crime scene to a suspect, the chances are one in 5,000 that the suspect committed the crime. If you match 13 different STR loci, the chances are one in hundreds of trillions that the suspect committed the crime. Once again, the more STR loci that match, the more individualized the evidence becomes. The process for creating a STR profile is similar to creating a DNA fingerprint using VNTRs. The DNA still needs to be extracted and PCR still needs to be performed. However, this time during PCR, special fluorescent primers are used to help visualize the STRs. Instead of a gel block with wells, the DNA fragments move through a capillary tube filled with gel. The smaller DNA fragments will still move faster through the capillary tube. A laser is used to detect the fluorescent primers on the STRs and the amount of a certain STR is shown as a peak on a graph. After DNA extraction, the process is automated, which makes it much easier to perform than DNA profiling using VNTRs. More likely than not, the process is very confusing to you. But at this point, I am more concerned with you being able to read the results than knowing how the results were produced. Okay, so here is an individual's STR profile. You can see the 13 different STR loci are represented along with this AMEL loci, which is not an STR. We will talk about that in a second. 
Let's look at this more closely. Most of the times you can see each STR loci has two peaks, like D18S51 or VWA or TPOX. Do you remember what causes the two peaks? Look at the two peaks for the D7S820 STR. Maybe the one with nine repeats came from dad and the one with 11 repeats came from mom. This individual was heterozygous for the D7S820 STR. Now there are a few STR loci that have only one peak. Look at this first one, or TH01, or CSF1P0. This means the individual is homozygous for that STR. Looking at the very first peak here, both mom and dad had 17 repeats for this STR. All right. How is this used in forensics? Here is an abbreviated STR profile using only three loci. The two suspects profiles are located at the top, followed by the DNA sample from the crime scene. By analyzing the profiles, you can easily see that the peaks on suspect two's profile match exactly with the profile from the crime scene. Okay, how can STR profiles be used for paternity tests? Similar to how the bands on a VNTR fingerprint of a child must match a band in either mom or dad's fingerprint, all the peaks of an STR profile from a child must match a peak on either mom or dad's profile. In this example, you can see the first peak from the child matches up with mom. The second peak from the child matches up with dad. Third peak matches up with mom. Fourth peak matches up with dad. If you keep going, all the peaks match up with either mom or dad. So whoever this father is, is the actual father of this child. In this example, you can see the first peak matches up with mom and the second peak matches up with the alleged father's profile. The third peak matches a peak in mom's profile, but the fourth peak doesn't match a peak in mom or dad's profile. All the peaks from a child's profile must match a parent. In this case, the man alleged to be the father is in fact not the father. Just to recap, the advantages of STR profiles to VNTR profiles include the following. An STR analysis allows you to determine the sex of the individual. Remember that AMEL loci? That locus is on the X and Y chromosome and allows for the determination of gender from a DNA profile. The STR loci on a Y chromosome can narrow down male suspects quickly if you happen to have a DNA sample that is a mixture of DNA from different individuals. STR allows for accurate results on old and degraded DNA samples, and STR does not require the use of restriction enzymes to cut the DNA.